afternoon everybody. It is Saturday the 6th of July. A quiet day, a thoughtful day, a reflection of yesterday perhaps to some. I thought given the current mood of the country we might do some George Orwell. Homage to Catalonia. Care to join me on a, a little journey? It's quite an old one. It cost three and six to buy this book back in 1962. It's as old as my husband. It's 62 years old, is this book. First published in 1938 on the 25th of April. George Orwell was actually Eric Arthur Blair, but his pen name was George Orwell. And uh, well, who doesn't love a little bit of George Orwell? And given the uh, current state of events, um, that we seem to be dealing with on a, a daily basis. <laughs> I said I wouldn't get political and I do not intend to put my views across because as I have said before politics, money and religion are vulgar subjects. However, if they are chosen within the form of literature, then I do believe we can discuss. So, who doesn't love a little bit of George Orwell? I know I certainly do. And rather than do the classics of Animal Farm and 1984, I thought we'd go and do homage to Catalonia. Uh, especially as this is Arthur's, Eric Arthur, yes George, it is your first hand account, if you like, of his experience in the Spanish Civil War in 1936. And would you believe that we are now in our 88th year since the Spanish Civil War occurred. I know, have we learned much? Have we learned anything? Well, as I said, who doesn't love a bit of George Orwell? Come along with me on a little journey into Catalonia and let's explore it together. This book is justly famous for its disillusioned account of how the Communist Party, in its eagerness to defeat Franco, betrayed the people in Catalonia for the sake of speed. How it savagely executed and imprisoned the socialist comrades for the sake of temporary alliance with the bourgeoisie. <laughs> it's a very gritty, downright depressing account of war at bargain basement level. The guns were so poorly made they couldn't hit a barn door or a target for that matter. There is little to no food. Candles, lights, fuel and matches are more important than the threat of the enemy. Basic necessities to ensure life as we know it were not there. In spite of terrible marksmanship, George still managed to get shot in the neck. And his account of what it's like to be wounded in the war 
is quite the tale and is utterly and completely absorbing in every aspect. And you will not, honestly, you will not be able to put this book down. It's amazing. <sighs> Darling George goes into incredible detailed discussions throughout the book on the various left-wing parties and their lack of responsibilities and devil-may-care attitudes. <sighs> it's their astounding lack of responsibility in many ways that led to the and and the inability to be able to handle dire situations yes definitely that led them to their defeat on the streets of Barcelona and that contributed to the arrests and purges and imprisonment of their very own people. George's reasoning for going into great length of explanation in the novel is due in part to the previous accounts of the international press. As the international press had been so deceptive and downright lying and propagandizing everything, he felt it necessary to set the record straight. Now more than ever, I feel, I, we must feel, we must take heed of his narrative and learn from him this most valuable lesson so we may not repeat this travesty again. It was 1936, it's 88 years since the start of the Spanish Civil War. Are we are about to embark on another? George said, if you ask me why I joined the militia, I should have answered to fight against fascism. And if you had asked me what I was fighting for, I should have answered for mankind's common decency. George knew at some point that the war would be lost and that both sides had major issues and flaws. There was so much confusion, there really, really was. And it was all hidden underneath excruciating, stupid decisions, downright lying and dishonesty and propaganda. Well, war is sometimes fueled by propaganda. Sadly, it does happen. He realised he was fighting for a lost cause. Not because fighting for human decency, that just wasn't an option. George, throughout his experience, dealt with massive trauma. And what we would class as PTSD today. He fought to do the right thing, despite it being a losing battle. Imagine fighting in a war that you know you're going to lose, but doing it anyway because it was common decency. Wow. George manages throughout the book to highlight the human condition, the cowardice, the bravery the love and the hate. We cannot escape who we are at any price. 
Homage to Catalonia is to understand humankind and political satire and would inspire George to write Animal Farm and 1984. George wrote because he was, I would say George wrote because he passionately cared and he was angry. He was very angry and upset by his experiences during the war. I guess we can all relate to George and his experiences on the battlefield, those who have experienced it, those that understand the futility of war. Mm. This is quite the definitive novel on the Spanish Civil War and should be taught in history, political science, any lesson where a child will listen. We should heed the warning George gave us before it's too late. And that, my darlings, I told you it was bleak, downright depressing. I haven't yet found war to be a joyous, uplifting experience. I speak with experience on that. If you've not read it, find some time to settle down. It's not a very big book. Not really. How many? 221 pages. 221 pages out of your life to sit down and read a classic by George Orwell. Happy readings, darlings, and enjoy. I'm sure you will.